Good afternoon. My name is Michael Lauren Pru, and I'm with Command Communications for Nav Air. Welcome to our final session for today. We have PMA 205's Program Manager, Captain Lisa Sullivan. Now, PMA 205 is a Naval Aviation Training Systems and Ranges Program Office and located in Pax River, Maryland. This office is at the forefront of naval aviation training, and they are revolutionizing the way we train by utilizing virtual reality and connecting live virtual constructive capabilities. Employing these technologies helps our sailors and Marines get the reps and sets they need to train like they fight and allows the carrier battle groups and all supporting to train in high complex and challenging environments. So we're going to have Captain Sullivan come up and we will let her talk and then we will open the floor for your questions. We're not only here live, we're also streaming virtually through LinkedIn. So hoping your questions come in through there as well. So Captain Sullivan. All right, good afternoon, everybody. I think I'm the last one today before happy hour, but remember that doesn't start until 1500. So we don't have to worry about that. Hard to follow Admiral Peters. Uh, I had the privilege of being his chief of staff a couple years ago. And uh, anyway, I, I'll try and be as energetic, uh, but certainly uh, great to follow uh, Admiral Peters and then my other program managers. Uh, the picture you see here kind of hidden, talking about a little bit about speed to the fleet, naval aviation training next. So we can't all, we can't train our pilots and aviators like we have in the past. That means, you know, everybody gets 10, you know, 10 thick books, each student, you go and you try and read these displays, go to the simulators, and they realize down in uh, Pitzcola and Corpus, we have technologies out there. We had a, uh, a couple Marine brothers that came down, they were not doing well in Pensacola, in their garage, they built their own AR, VR type technology, and uh, word got out, they, they passed a swimmingly, and really our flags noticed. So about two years at ITSIC, uh, the big training conference, uh, we had multiple all-stars come down and they were with our uh, S&T folks and they said, hey, uh, we want some of that technology for AR, VR, S&T, we want it at the Naval Academy before service selection. So we had, along with NOC TSD, exactly three to four months to put in AR, VR type technology. I think that's Dahlgren Hall there at the Naval Academy where those uh, systems are still existing. Okay, next slide. Uh, biggest thing that you should get out of this slide as far as industry is, hey, we are a central cog for many training systems and ranges. So on the Navy trainer side, we have operator and maintainer simulators and curriculum. We also have distributed mission training uh, where you're connecting multiple type model series across the country. Uh, we have uh, at Fallon an integrated training facility uh, where we're connecting multiple types model series to support the high end fight, uh, all within our Navy trainers line. Marine Corps trainers, very similar, every type model series of Marine Corps, uh, where you have your, and, and everything Marine Corps you see is, is FOB based or deployed, where we have the containerized type of uh, boxes there we have, but that might be actually to uh, avoid MILCON, not necessarily before deploy, but still very important. We get those capabilities out there associated with uh, Marine Corps, and they also are just do doing a lot associated with supporting the MAGTAFs with disturbed mission training on the Marine Corps side. Uh, we also have training ranges, many capabilities associated with instrumentation, uh, underwater, uh, surf underwater training ranges, so we have fixed nodes across uh, across the country, and then also over uh, Oconus, and then we also have portable underwater ranges. Uh, and also with that, we have instrumentation for air, uh, TIX-1 system, the follow-on TIX-2 large area tracking system, a lot of the EW systems, EW threats that are on uh, the different ranges. Lots of coordination, uh, not only with Navy, Marine Corps, but also Air Force in our training ranges department. Uh, general training, you know, some of the torture devices that we go through as air crew, as far as uh, dunkers, and also uh, when there are physio physiological episodes, uh, we reinvented the way that we were doing uh, mask on, breathing devices, and pneumobaharic uh, training devices. Okay, so 6,500 plus 
uh, devices in 60, 60 locations. We just have a lot in our portfolio. If you're wondering where training is for aviation or a system, uh, if we don't do it, we can point you to the right folks. Next slide. Okay, the theme of this year was in this together or sea air space. And when I saw that, I couldn't appreciate that more when I looked at our numbers for deliveries uh, across. So we have the most deliveries across NAVAIR 2020, 20, in 2020, 2021. And we really did it on top of the shoulders of our industry partners. I mean, you traveled, you tested, you installed, and you know what? We learned a lot as a Navy, too. We found ways now to be able to observe the training remotely, uh, approve the training remotely. So what I'm hoping is this is going to, we've had a lot of lessons learned. Maybe there's less of the on-site oversight, and we let you do, industry do what you do best, and that's deliver to the fleet. So over 300 deliveries. Many thanks again to industry. We stood on your shoulders through COVID to get these things delivered. Next slide. Uh, another venue I like doing is the training uh, ITSIC in venue that is normally right after Thanksgiving down in Orlando. And the point of this to say, hey, this is where we are, but also where we want to go in the future. So for our industry partners, okay, where does naval aviation training, where are they looking in science technology? Uh, where are they going from here? So I, I look at it as four quadrants. Uh, fidelity and scalability, we are increasing our simulator fidelity uh, and scalability. So we are doing instead of large trainers too, low cost trainers, so you can build those rapidly, quickly and have more reps and sets. Uh, we are doing a lot of the technologies with AR, VR and mixed reality um, and then reconfigurable training. So uh, Marine Corps, we have an air crew trainer that you can uh, train your air crew for H1, V22. Uh, an H53K, and you can reconfigure those trainers, uh, delivering those this year. Uh, in readiness, uh, looking at uh, AI as far as being able to be an instructor in the loop or an artificial instructor in the loop, uh, machine learning for virtual crews to help them get their reps, reps and sets for readiness. Uh, and then also very big that was mentioned before is what can we do to improve uh, the number of MC aircraft, certainly we have a place in there that we could be looking at technologies to help our maintainers through AR, VR, reps and sets again to get those aircraft uh, on the flight line up. Uh, in data analytics, we're looking, there's a massive amount of information that come from uh, training events, especially training events where they're integrated and connecting. So that data capture uh, and then being able to take that and assess it for performance measures and assessments and then I think what takes the longest is that, you know, you're waiting and waiting for those uh, after action reviews. So working with multiple industry partners to look at ways and, and things that you have that can support us for that quick turnaround for after action reviews uh, in data analytics. And then the fourth quadrant and in integrated war fighting capability, uh, live virtual constructive, which I'll talk uh, a bit more in the next two slides. And in that, cross-domain solutions because we do have multiple security levels that we are connecting across multiple platforms. Distributed mission training, connecting multiple uh, platforms, type model series across the country. Um, and with this, what's most important here is we're integrating a lot of things and in some cases a lot of things that already exist. Uh, so Cybersecurity is something we uh, strive for and need in our future projects, our ability to be cyber agile, and that just means being able to improve and update the cyber, our cyber posture. Uh, open architecture, when you integrate all these uh, different systems, different OEMs, we've got to be modular and open so we can plug them in together, and then interoperable. Uh, not only interoperable with Department of Navy, Navy Marine Corps, Cross community, as I mentioned, F-18, E-2, cross service with our Air Force uh, aviation counterparts and coalition. And then we are also working with our test counterparts for test and training, learning what they have already developed for test and bringing that over into the training environment. Um, one thing that uh, Admiral Corey mentioned today, he would like to see 
us not talk about platforms and actually talk about the capabilities that we're bringing in. What I like to say is uh, training, you have to have training. This is what happens. Uh, a lot of times, no other opportunity to do that before the actual engagement. So we're no longer an enabler in an integrated training environment. We are lethality, so training equals lethality. Okay, next slide. Okay, LVC ecosystem. Uh, I have to uh, give the, the title here to one of my uh, former, or my fellow PMs, uh, uh, Captain Stuff Denny at 265. We're talking about the LVC environment and how it involves so many things. It wasn't just one system that was LVC. It was an ecosystem. So live, real people, real weapons, systems, virtual, uh, real people and simulated weapons, and then constructive, uh, computer-generated uh, uh, generated forces and environment. What the middle is showing here is, hey, again, not one just system. It's a joint test and training live virtual constructive ecosystem. We want them to all work together. Uh, bringing pieces together, ensure we're not breaking one piece of test tape, test capabilities they have there as we bring in training capabilities. We've got to make sure that we are tapping in and improving the networks and infrastructure in a live virtual constructive ecosystem. Our simulators, that we are in, continuing to increase the fidelity of the simulators, but what we're finding as connecting these, we're able to start uh, finding out where there's deficiencies between the two simulators and fix those. Uh, con uh, continue to improve our constructive forces and our EW threat models in uh, constructive forces and effects, uh, improvement of the range infrastructure. Uh, if anybody has been to Fallon or worked with Nautic, uh, they are on the cutting edge, always leaning forward, pushing and pushing the program offices in the right direction. They want to connect everything. They, you know, they don't they don't care if it was a bicycle at some point uh, or let's say uh, a radar from 1920s. They want, it anal or they want it digital now and they want to connect it. Uh, and, and we work on those requirements with them to try and get them in the, in the direction they want to go. Uh, range instrumentation. So as I mentioned, TIX-1, uh, the follow-on TIX-2. Uh, then we have ladder, which is a large area. The instrumentation piece is very important. Platforms and aircraft ships because of the OFPs that you have to modify the operational flight programs in each platform to determine what sensors you want to stimulate in each aircraft. And I say F-18 is probably five years ahead of everybody else uh, associated with the Navy, but certainly Fleet Forces is ready for our other platforms such as E-2, H-60, uh, P-8 to, to also update their OFPs to be in this live virtual constructive environment. And then partner nations are definitely uh, uh, participating and, and with us wanting to be uh, part of an ecosystem also to train to the high end fight. Next slide. Okay, so our team spent a lot of time with this. I'm like, I got a vision. Okay, I've got an Atari, I've got my Wii, I've got a bicycle, I've got a Tesla, I'm trying to explain the complexities of LVC, and we're just gonna plug it all in together and we're all gonna play Halo. I was like, can you draw that for me? And they're like, okay, so they went back 10, 16 times. And then they're like, no, it's all copyrighted, you can't use that, but that's the, the vision that I have here. We're trying to connect old systems, whether, you know, bicycles or our, our TV systems, analog systems with and converting them to digital the colors are representing the different security levels all these different systems are at, trying to connect together to be in one environment together and connecting worldwide. So definitely complex associated with the systems. They were initially built for different purposes. They were not, they're intended for unit or individual level, not necessarily connected. Uh, multiple security levels across our platforms that we have to watch and then various manufacturers, uh, different standards. But I know industry has been eager for LVC for a while. You've known it's been there, you've wanted us to move faster. Uh, so I'm not telling you anything you don't already know and I know everybody's eager here to help out. Next slide. Uh, so a little bit about 205 as a, a cog associated with LVC. 
there isn't a large, broad LVC program of record associated with the Department of Navy. Uh, however, 205 has a lot of these systems or connections to the systems to help aviation LVC uh, continue to grow. On the live side, I mentioned tactical combat uh, training system. And coming up this month, we will be demoing uh, TIX2. And in that demo, we'll be connecting down in Norfolk uh, with a JSAF system, connecting to the Navy trainious, uh, training continuous Naval Continuous Training Environment, sorry, NCTE, Training Network, I'll just say that. Uh, bringing it up to PAX, shooting it up to the aircraft where a threat will stimulate uh, F-18 early warning radar, uh, will send information back, also real-time kill notification. And why I think that's exciting is uh, you've got um, the next generation threat system we use as far as our semi-automated forces but also they use the joint, uh, joint semi-automated forces. How do all those play together? Who is the, the master of those events? Uh, very excited about that demo, plus pulling in a man flight simulator, so the virtual side uh, at Pax River, and that's happening next week. Um, we also have underwater ranges, uh, you Switter. Uh, they are also looking to connect in a LVC-like environment with their, our, on the underwater side with our ladder instrumentation for more USW type of uh, increased training. And then we have distributed uh, mission training, uh, so connecting multiple type model series, but not only strike. Uh, it's happening everywhere, and 205 can't take credit for that. Uh, it's a bigger group associated with Corona that owns the network, each of the platform uh, office that are helping to contribute to increasing the fidelity of the simulators. Uh, but I just heard Summer Fury, uh, P8 connecting with the H60, connecting with the Air Force, uh, V22 also, uh, AWACS and such, getting so much readiness per cruise for an event. And, and that's exactly what we're looking to do in the distributed environment. But most importantly, I think what Maritime learned from that where we've been alone and unafraid, I'm uh, P3 NFO, you know, semi off alone is no, we have to work in the joint environment. So Summer Fury, I was starting to show that associated with the maritime side. Okay, um, for constructive, uh, we work very closely with the next generation uh, threat system and the platforms that use those uh, and other uh, modules and environmentals. And then for facilities and range integration, for strike side in Oceana, just last year, we opened the Naval Aviation Distributed Training Center, white cell, red cell. Uh, they plan for the mission before. Uh, they connect across Lemoore, F-18s, uh, Growlers up in Whidbey, E-2s over in Norfolk and Point Magoo. Uh, it's a lot of activity before you go to Fallon. So they do these reps and sets prior to get to Fallon, so they really can do that high-end integrated training while they're at Fallon, then come back and get their reps and sets. So the train, Naval Aviation Training Center that was open, and it's now at, at um, Oceana. There is also a maritime one on the West Coast uh, out at TTGP. Um, the integrated training facility is also one thing I want to talk about, and that's Fallon. So we have our distributed, but we also have a closed loop in Fallon. Uh, providing multiple simulators and also uh, Aegis type simulators and connecting F-35 effects based trainers uh, to continue to improve the uh, ability that they have there at Fallon, continue to grow that type of capability. And like I said, they're moving us fast. They want to connect everything. Uh, you imagine I'm with my cyber folks very often associated with everything that they want to connect. Okay, next slide, please as if LVC wasn't exciting enough, because it is exciting. I could talk uh, for days on that. Uh, we are also at the edge of s &T that I think is exciting. Kind of nervous when I came in the job because I wasn't a gamer. Um, I didn't really uh, know if I could put on the different AR, VR devices without maybe getting woozy or something, but very exciting with how fast we have moved out along with Night Knock TSD associated with our uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, mish, uh, and then mixed reality uh, type of s and developments in, in the uh, center there. So 
I mentioned earlier that first slide was Naval Aviation Training Next, uh, delivering trainers quickly, and Sinatra putting out requirements almost daily associated with where they want to go next. This will be very exciting to see the next, I think one pilot group has gone through, the next one will go through next uh, to see if we are uh, turning out pilots, NFOs, more quickly instead of just a pipeline. Uh, we also are involved with data analytics uh, associated with fleet adaptive uh, operations. So s and to be able to uh, analyze and communicate our human performance data. So looking forward at ICSIC to seeing a lot of those pieces. And then AI and machine learning, uh, leveraging all of these. Again, uh, there's a load on operators and certainly instructors associated with that. If we can automate it that so students can get there, go in at any time do their reps and sets, um, that would be very, very uh, exciting because we can turn those pilots and FOs around quicker. So these are just examples of some of the s and activities, but not all of them. Um, later, I think it's tomorrow, NOC TSD also will be briefing and can't say enough how much we lean and use uh, NOC TSD for a lot of these uh, science and technology capabilities. But not only that, uh, working with NOC AD, uh, and not WD associated with a lot of these capabilities, and they reach directly out to industry partners here to help us with those uh, cutting edge technologies. So I think I'm wrapping up here. I probably talked way fast, uh, maybe not. Uh, but with that, I just wanna say thanks again to industry partners, over 300 systems delivered during COVID. Uh, certainly we were on your shoulders during that while you were testing and installing. And I think we did learn a lot of lessons learned associated with that. So thank you very much. Now we're gonna open up the floor for your questions. Questions? Yes, sir. How does the uh, TCTS program compare with Slate? Do they complement each other? Do they compete with each other? Like how are the two programs related? Yeah, as I was describing in the uh, LVC ecosystem, what's most exciting about LVC is there's lots of different technologies to look at. So in addition to looking at uh, what is being demonstrated in Slate, uh, as far as their waveform that they are developing for that, you know, we have Link Inject to Live as far as what F18 has looked at. And, and a lot of it is that integration with the OFP, with that platform that has been uh, the most exciting. But I say we enjoy being able to go to the test, visit our counterparts at Air Force, see what they're bringing with test and jets, uh, Slate Demo, Link Inject to Live that they have with F-18 and multiple other LVC technologies and bringing them in first to make sure they don't break each other, but then determine path forward associated with that ecosystem. Thank you. Next question. We do have one coming in virtually. What has been the most challenging aspect of developing LVC environments? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most challenging is the multiple security levels of all the different platforms that we are bringing in. Um, it's not necessarily just a technical issue or problem, it's, it's policy and with policy, it's communicating. So ensuring that you're communicating with each platform that owns those security class guides getting them together and all coming forward to agree on a certain policy, and then you can build that architecture. So the security piece has been uh, tough, uh, and then also just cyber, uh, ensuring that when we are building things that are cyber agile, that we can update them as we need to. And when you're talking about connecting new systems, such as TICs, to older systems that might be uh, simulators and such, you do have to uh, all pass the certain standards that Navy controls with Navy continuous training environment to make sure you can make those connections. All right, we do have another question and I may have to let you look at this one so I don't botch it up, but will 205 manage FAM to us cost schedule? Um, I will have to, I will have to get back to Jeff on that one asking on one of our SIBRs if we would be managing once it transitions to FNC. And so I'll make sure that Jeff gets that information associated with our s and Absolutely. Advisor. All right. 
Any other floor questions? All right. Well, then thank great you. job today. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you all for joining us.